All right, hello everyone. Hello, hello. We are back with something special today. It is the Canon EOS R6. And actually, this is not the R6, it's just the regular R. But I'm filming on the R6 right now. And, um, and that is just so I can show you guys the kind of quality that you can get. I'm gonna upload this in 4K. Usually I don't upload my YouTube videos in 4K, just because 1080 is a lot easier to work with. And I don't necessarily think that people on YouTube are, are trying to browse to look for the best 4K content. To that point, I think there is a specific crowd, um, you know, people trying to purchase a new camera that would like to see what kind of like 4K quality they could expect coming out of a certain camera. So uh, right now I'm actually recording in ProRes HQ on the Atomos Ninja V or Ninja 5. Definitely let me know what you guys think about the quality of the video coming out of this camera right now. It's This is the best 4K 24 frames per second that you can get coming out of the Canon EOS R6. So yeah, I got this camera about a week ago and I've been using it around the house and taking it to the park a little bit. I haven't used it on any paid gigs, but honestly, I can already tell that this camera is going to be so much fun to use. I was shocked by the autofocus speed and the autofocus acquisition coming out of this camera. I mean, it has made pretty much every camera that I've used in the past three years, including the D850 and the Canon EOS R, um, sort of almost like it was like a hassle to use those in terms of autofocus. Like all I have to do with the Canon EOS R6 is literally just point, point the camera to the subject that I want to focus on and it already knows what to focus on. It already knows like what I'm thinking. It's awesome. It's, it really is awesome. Um, so if, if there are people out there that have the Canon EOS R and they have the budget to upgrade or get a second camera um, and they're deciding whether they should get the R6, I would say it's worth the upgrade even though you're losing 10 megapixels from what i've seen uh, it's really hard to notice anyways so um what are some other things that i like about this camera the this is actually it was a downgrade in terms of the canon eos r uh, and, and that is the resolution of the lcd screen on the back but honestly with 20 megapixels you don't need a super high res screen on the back of your camera that's just gonna take up more power from your battery um I, I think from what i've read so far the canon eos r6 has better battery life than the canon eos r5 just because it's not trying to f to feed this really high res viewfinder and high resolution lcd screen so I actually appreciate that about the Canon EOS R6 because I would take the extra battery life over um, some of those uh, higher resolution options. So like I said, coming from the D850 and the Canon EOS R, I also had a couple RPs before that. Um, I This camera just feels like, this camera is definitely on a, a different level. Um, and it, it's a combination of things that make it feel that way. It's the high amount of frames per second that you can shoot, 12 frames per second. Um, I've never had anything that was that fast. And if it was that fast, it was always with the electronic shutter. But um, 12 frames per second with a mechanical shutter is, I, I don't know why I would ever need, I wouldn't ever need more than that, honestly. Like, unless I, for some reason, went down the professional uh, sports photography or wildlife photography route then um, no I, I definitely I mean 12 frames per second is pretty much overkill for me right now um, I remember when I shot with my Fuji X Pro 3 uh, I think that had eight frames per second but I thought that that was too much at the time so because um, it just kind of gets out of hand if you're just kind of like you know sometimes you get trigger happy and 
and then before you know it, your SD card is full and you're like, oh, shit. That'll make the post-editing process a lot more difficult too, because then you gotta sift through all of these photos that are exactly the same, pretty much. So, um, yeah, the 12 frames per second should definitely be utilized with intent, for sure. I would say another thing that I really love about this camera is the fact that it feels like my Nikon D850. Now it doesn't feel as rugged as the D850 because that camera was a tank, but in terms of the button layout and the grip and just kind of the features on the outside of the camera, it reminds me of a DSLR a lot, which I appreciate because while I like the kind of futuristic look of the EOS R uh, and the feel, it, it definitely looks sleek. Uh, it isn't necessarily more functional and you know for some things it takes a little bit more time to kind of switch modes so um, it wasn't like too crazy about that. It was kind of nice going back to the DSLR layout. I would say to me, if, if for the, this is for the Nikon shooters out there, if you ever had a D750, this camera is like the D750, but like a beefed up D750. It's like, and I, I really mean like, it's in every aspect it is better than D750. Besides maybe dynamic range, I'm not gonna say that the dynamic range is better, but um, it's if it's not better, then it's a, at least at the same level of the D750. Um, but for everything else, I mean, and this is, like, if we're talking about video, the, the R6 is way, way, way better than the D750. But um, in terms of photography, uh, I, I would uh, kind of compare it to that camera. And if I eventually get the R5, then I'm sure that's going to kind of remind me of my D850, which I miss. I miss a lot. Another thing that I've been trying to play around with is the uh, new picture format. It's called a, I think it's a HIF, H-E-I-F picture format. You can use that instead of a JPEG. Apparently it's supposed to have better dynamic range, I think, and maybe a broader color range to work with. So you might be getting more of that HDR look. I think that's what it is, but uh, honestly, I, I took the pictures on the camera, but I can't figure out how to transfer them to any of my other devices. Like I tried to use the uh, Wi-Fi feature on the R6 to transfer it to my phone, but it wouldn't let me transfer those files onto my iPhone. And then I tried to do it straight through the camera just with the SD card reader and um, my computer wouldn't open the files. So if anyone out there knows how to use these files, then please, please, please let me know um, because I'm just, I'm just curious about it. But to kind of come to a conclusion for this video, I wanted to let you guys know the first thing that I think you should do when you get the Canon EOS R6, and that is to switch the shutter mode. So switch it out of the EFCS, which is electronic front curtain shutter, into a mechanical shutter. And that way, especially you guys that have already invested your money into the RF glass, those fast primes, like the 1.2 primes, you are uh, not going to be taking a hit on the rendering of your out of focus areas um, if you switch it into mechanical. So uh, that's, that's really important. I think that there's some people out there that still don't realize the negative effects that you can get from using an electronic front curtain shutter. And I'll link the uh, video that I made on that from using the EOS RP uh, up here somewhere right now. And, um, and, and you guys can check that out because I'm not really sure why a lot of companies are placing the cameras into the electronic front curtain shutter as they ship the cameras out to the customers, but uh, I think it's a mistake. Uh, maybe it's because they think that the customers will appreciate the, you know, quieter shutter sound, or I don't know, maybe they think that customers will appreciate that you are going to get sharper pictures from time to time because 
you're not running into issues with shutter shock from the mechanical shutter um, but I haven't found that to be an issue on this camera so uh, yeah so that is what I think you should do first if you get this camera right when you get it just pop in the battery well charge the battery first because they never come charged and then pop it in and then switch the shutter mode to mechanical um, I'm going to come out with a full review of this camera and really kind of expand on what I keep pointing to the EOS R like it's the R6 um, and, and really kind of like talk about the, the little things that I like about the camera and I'm going to try to stay away from just the general specs because there's a thousand YouTube videos on that but um, so far uh, my initial thoughts on this camera, amazing. All right. I will talk to you guys later.